Shalom to everyone. We are now in the second shiur dealing with the topic of time, the nature of time, and life beyond time. I would like to summarize the insights that we have achieved in the previous shiur. Time is the result of changes in reality. As long as our reality is changing, we can notice a difference between the previous moment, the current moment, and the next moment, and therefore we have a flow of time. The reason our reality is constantly changing, because our reality is a physical reality. Our world is a physical world. And the character of the physical world is it constantly going through changes. That's the character of matter. Matter is constantly changing from one structure to the other. And therefore, since the physical world constantly goes through changes, therefore we have a flow of time. But in a reality that is non-physical, a spiritual reality, where there are no changes, there is no meaning to the sequence of time, and there is no flow of time. Another conclusion we have come to is since our world, our physical world was created, therefore time too is a creation. Since time exists only where there is a physical world, and when there are changes. And therefore just as our physical world was created, so too Time was created. Time is a creation. That's a fascinating idea. However, we find that idea also in modern science, in modern physics. Time is a creation. In, after the Big Bang Theory, scientists came to a conclusion that just as our physical world was created, so too time was created. After we have come to these insights and to these conclusions, I would like to ask a very basic question. Why was time created? If we have come to the conclusion that time is a creation, why was time created? Why do we need this world with the flow of time? In order to answer that question, we have to ask another basic question. Why was the world created? What is the purpose of creation? And if we understand what is the purpose of creation, we can understand better why was time created within the physical world. The purpose of creation is mentioned in many, many books, in various books. One of the most famous ones that deals with this question very basically is Derech Hashem, written by the Ramchal. I'd like to bring before you very basic ideas that describe the purpose of creation. The purpose of creation, the reason the Creator, Hashem, created this world is because Hashem wanted mankind to benefit from a tremendous amount of spiritual enjoyment. Hashem wanted mankind to enjoy. The most fundamental enjoyment we can have in this world is a spiritual enjoyment. Hashem wanted mankind to benefit from a tremendous abundance of spiritual enjoyment. That is the purpose of creation. How does a person reach that spiritual enjoyment? How does mankind benefit from the spiritual enjoyment? If mankind comes closer to Hashem, he will enjoy from the spiritual enjoyment. Why is that so? Because Hashem the Creator is the source of all spiritual enjoyments, all spiritual influence we have in this world. And then, if mankind comes closer to Hashem, he will be able to enjoy from that spiritual enjoyment, the abundance of spiritual enjoyment. However, Hashem the Creator wanted mankind to reach closeness to Him, to reach His spiritual enjoyment by His own efforts. So it becomes part of His inner self, part of His personality. Hashem didn't want to give it just as a handout, just as a present, as a matnat chinam. Hashem wanted that it will become an inner part of our personality. Therefore, mankind has to achieve this closeness to Hashem by His own efforts. Therefore, a man was created with two opposite forces, a physical body that pulls him away from Hashem, a spiritual neshama that pulls him closer to Hashem, and mankind also has a very unique force that is called the freedom of choice, p'chirach of shit. With the freedom of choice, man can overcome the physical body and direct himself towards spirituality, towards closeness to Hashem. And this is actually man's goal and man's purpose in his life. Man's goal in his life is to direct himself, to pull himself towards the neshama, towards spirituality. 
And the more he pulls himself towards spirituality, the closer he will become to Hashem, and the more he will be able to enjoy from the tremendous amount of spiritual enjoyment that Hashem wanted mankind to benefit from. Therefore, man's purpose, man's goal in life is to use the force that is called freedom of choice to overcome the forces of the, the physical body and to direct himself towards spirituality and to come closer to Hashem. However, Hashem the Creator didn't want this struggle between the physical body and the spiritual neshama to be an endless struggle. Hashem didn't want the struggle to be never-ending. Hashem wanted that the struggle will take a certain period of time and afterwards mankind will be able to enjoy, be able to benefit from the spiritual abundance that Hashem prepared for him. And therefore, this world is composed of two separate frameworks of time. The first framework of time is called Olam Azeh. The second framework of time is called Olam Abba. In Olam Azeh, this world, the physical body and the spiritual neshama both govern, both control man equally. There's a constant struggle between the body, the physical body and the spiritual neshama, and man has to choose. However, in Olam Abba, the body doesn't rule at all. The body doesn't govern at all. The body doesn't influence at all, only the neshama rules. And at that point, man can enjoy closeness to Hashem without the, bother, without the body bothering him, closeness to Hashem according to the spiritual essence that he has built up in this world in Olam Hazeh. Let's go back to Olam Hazeh and understand it more clearly. Olam Hazeh is a place where there is a struggle between the physical body and the spiritual neshama, and mankind has to use the force that is called freedom of choice to overcome the physical body and to direct himself towards spirituality. As a result of this, at every different moment, mankind changes. Every moment is an opportunity for mankind to change. A person is not the same as he was at the previous moment, since he has done something. He has directed himself towards spirituality, or maybe he has gone towards the physical body, but at every moment, mankind changes. Mankind is not the same that he was at the previous moment because he has changed. He has either advanced towards spirituality, or maybe he has been pulled towards the physical body, but man is constantly changing. He's not at the same point that he was at the moment before, because he has the opportunity to continuously change his body. So this world, Olam Azeh, is a world of changes. A world that man constantly changing. That's the essence of man. The essence of man is to change. He's always changing, either towards spirituality or towards the physical body. That's the essence of man. And since the main goal, the main purpose of man is to constantly undergo changes, therefore, this world, Olam Azeh, has to be a world that is created with time. Time is a result of changes. As long as there are changes, there is a flow of time. So the flow of time allows a person to change, to constantly change. The flow of time gives a person an opportunity to change and also gives him an opportunity to realize and to distinguish where he was at the previous moment and where he is now and maybe what he wants to be in the future. He also wants to change. The flow of time allows a person to constantly undergo changes. And therefore, this world was created with time, with a sequence of time, with a flow of time, because man, man's main purpose is to undergo changes. And time allows man to constantly change himself, constantly direct himself towards spirituality, and hopefully allows a person to develop and to advance towards spirituality. Therefore, this world was created with a sequence of time and with a flow of time. I'd like to bring before you a very interesting expansion on this subject brought by Rabbi Dessler. Rabbi Dessler, in Mikhtav Meliau, Volume 2, says the following. We are used to thinking that as time goes by, it doesn't concern us at all, because time goes by and it doesn't leave any influence on us. From 
the present to the future, from the past to the present to the future, we flow through time, and time doesn't influence at all. But that's not true, says Rabbi Dessa. That's not true at all. Time leaves a very deep influence on man's inner essence. Because at every moment, man has an opportunity to change, to do something, to build, to structure his inner personality. And if he does, then he has built up something. If he doesn't, then it's an empty space. But every moment that goes by leaves its imprint on our inner selves. A moment that goes by is an opportunity for man to build up his inner essence. And if he builds it up, then he has another building block inside his inner personality. If not, then it's an empty space. Therefore, every moment that goes by actually leaves its imprint on our inner selves. However, we don't see this, we don't feel this. The reason is because it becomes part of the past. And since it became part of the past, it's not part of us, we don't feel it. However, says Rabbi Desra, this is only due to the concealment of the body and the concealment of time. In this world, in this physical world, we are under the concealment of the body and we are under the concealment of time. And therefore, we have no connection to our past. Our past exists, but we have no connection to it at all. Says Rabbi Desla, the part of our personality that finds its expression through any moment in time becomes bonded to one of the two realities, the reality of light or the reality of darkness, according to the choice that we make in that instant. And by the time that moment has passed, it already became an integral part of our inner neshama. Although the past is hidden and has already been forgotten as if it never existed, nonetheless, it remains with us eternally and will never vanish. To understand this more clearly, says Rabbi Dessler, let us take, for example, a map of the world that we were to spread out on the table. And we were to cover that map with a sheet of paper that covers the map completely. And in the middle of the sheet of paper, we draw a small hole where we can see just one of the cities. And we move the sheet of paper going from one city to the other. The cities we have seen already are concealed, are part of the past. We can't see them anymore because they're covered by the sheet of paper. The cities that we will visit in the future are also concealed, also covered. What we see is just the city where we are at now, the city in the present. However, all the cities that we have seen in the past haven't disappeared. They are here. They are just hidden by the sheet of paper. And what will happen when we take off the sheet of paper? And suddenly all of the map will be revealed to us at once. We will see all the places that we have been at at once. What was before hidden, what was before concealed by the sheet of paper, when it is uncovered, we will see all of the map at once. Same thing says Rabbi Dessler concerns mankind. Mankind in this world is under the concealment of time. And therefore the past is concealed. You can't see the past. We have no connection to the past. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It does exist. It's just covered. But when the neshama leaves the body, when the neshama departs from the body, then man will see all of the past as one big picture. Man will see all of the moments that he used with the freedom of choice, all that he built up, all that he structured in his inner self that was concealed because it was part of the past. Mankind will see all of this at once. All of these millions of moments that man used the freedom of choice will become one big picture. One big picture that is man's essence. And inside this essence, man will live for eternity, eternally. This is what we call Olam Haba. When the Neshama departs from the body, it will go back to all the millions of moments, all the millions of pieces of freedom of choice that man used to build up and to structure his inner self. Therefore, while we are in this world, in Olam Hazeh, under the concealment of time, we're just building up, we're structuring our inner selves by every moment of time. However, these moments of time are concealed. 
But when the neshama will leave the body, when the neshama departs from the body, then the concealment of time, the concealment of the physical world will be revealed. And then man will see all of the millions of moments that he used the freedom of choice, all of these millions of moments that he built up and structured in himself, he will see it as one big picture and that will be his life in Olam Haba. His inner essence that he built up in this world, that will be his eternal life in Olam Haba. Rabbi Chaim Friedlader further explains this idea that is brought by Rabbi Desler. Rabbi Friedlader in Siftei Chaim Mo'adim Volume 2 says the following. Since we completely exist within the framework of time, it is difficult for us to comprehend a dimension that transcends time. However, with the illustration that was mentioned by Rabbi Dessler, we can begin to understand. Just like in the example used, if we were to remove the paper covering the map, we would be able to see at once all of the locations that are marked off. And not just a partial view. So too, when the neshama departs from the body, the veil that we refer to as time withdraws. And then, in one instant, the person perceives and becomes aware of all that he has done and created during his lifetime, within the framework of time, moment after moment. This refers both to the good he has accomplished and the spiritual growth that results from it as well as the sins he has committed, leading, leading to the creation of an impure state within his neshama. He will experience all of this simultaneously. And this is the meaning of a dimension that transcends time. In truth, this is eternal life. Eternity does not mean the endless continuity of time, for that would merely exist within the framework of time. Rather, eternity consists of the awareness of past events as an integral part of the present. Further expansion on this idea we find in the book Nefesh HaChaim by Rab Chaim Mivolojin. Rab Chaim Mivolojin says, And this is the underlying idea of Oilom Habo, which is a composite of one's very own actions. After the neshama departs from the body, the neshama rises above to delight and satiate itself through the glistering lights, the forces and saintly worlds that have gathered and multiplied as a result of one's good deeds. And further Rabbi Chaim of Elogian adds in Ruach HaChaim as commentary on Pilke Ovois, after death, this itself is a person's reward. All of his good cleaves together, uniting into one, and clothes him in the attire of Talmudic scholars. Further elucidation of this is found in the works of the Reshit Chochmah, a student of the Ramak Rabbi Moshe Kordovero. This is what he says, The days that one amends, will become the garments that will clothe his neshama. And through these garments, one will merit to look at and to partake the wonderful joy that is the hidden lot of the righteous. As the Zohar states, happy are the righteous whose days are free of sin and remain so in the next world. And when they depart from this world, their mitzvahs and good deeds enjoin together, and they create garments of honor for them to wear. And it is in these garments that they merit to partake of the joys of the next world. Balatanya also expands on this idea and says, Every moment flows from the upper worlds in a different way infusing the lower world with life, while the life flow from the previous moment is brought back to its source, carrying within it all of the Torah and good deeds that has been retrieved from this world. Balatani is saying actually that every moment is 
called in the Kabbalah writings an influence of light. Every moment is actually a spiritual light that comes down and creates a moment of time. And that moment of time gives a man an opportunity to build up and to structure his inner, is, inner essence. And when that moment of time goes by, when that moment is finished, then this light goes back to its source, goes back to the spiritual worlds, and there it waits for man until the neshama departs from the body. Therefore, from all these quotations that we have brought before you, we see that time is not something external. Time is not something that just passes by man without leaving its influence. On the contrary, every moment of time leaves its imprint, its influence on man's inner self. And time allows a man, time is an opportunity for man to build up and to structure his inner self, which will stay with him in Olam Abba for eternity. Therefore, it's interesting to see that time in the Hebrew language, Zman is from the root Hizdamnut. Hizdamnut in the Hebrew language is an opportunity. And time is actually an opportunity, it's actually Hizdamnut. However, the real source of the word Zman in Loshon HaKodesh, not in the Hebrew language, is from the root Zimun. Zimun is a gathering, just like we make Zimun before we pray Birkat Amazon. We gather together for a certain purpose. Zimun in Lashon HaKodesh is gathering for a certain purpose. Like the Gemur in Shabbos says, Melech Shizimen Avadav, a king who has gathered his servants for a certain purpose. The Gemur in Moed Katan says, Kulchem Mezumanim Lechaya Olam Abba. You are all prepared for Chaya Olam Abba. Zimun also, preparation. The Torah before Matan Torah in Sefer Shmoy says, V'hiyu nechonim l'shloshet yamim. You should be prepared in three days of time. The Talgum Unkulu says, V'hiyu nechonim havu zminin. You should be prepared. So zman is from the root zimun. Zimun is a preparation for a purpose in the future. And that is the definition of time. Time is an opportunity. Time is a preparation for the future. If man builds up and structures his inner self, and he's actually preparing himself for the future. I would like to bring before you another very interesting idea that is brought by Rabbi Dessler, Mikhtav Meliyahu, Volume 4. Rabbi Dessler deals with the concept of life and death. How do we perceive life and how do we perceive death? Rabbi Dessler says that we are used to thinking that after the neshama departs from the body, the neshama will come to a different world, in another place, in another time, and this is called Olam Haba. And there, we will be rewarded for all of what we have done in this world. However, says Rabbi Desra, that's not true. We haven't come to a different world. On the contrary, says Rabbi Desra, what we refer to as death, the departure from the body, is only the removal of the physical veil, resulting in a perception of oneness, that our whole lives are literally as one. When the neshama departs from the body, it won't come to a different place. It's just like removing the sheet of paper. The neshama will be in a different perception. The neshama will perceive all of what he has done differently. So Olam Abba is not a different place. It's a different perception. Says Rabbi Dessler, therefore, the departure from the body does not lead us into another world that is somewhat similar to this one, and where only its time and place settings are different from this one. In truth, we have not come to another place at all. Rather, it is our perception that has changed. We are what we were previously. However, we find ourselves without the physical veil which narrowed our perception down to a very partial perception of reality. According to this, what we have been accustomed to call death is in reality the renewal of life. For through death we bring back the past, complied into one entity, which is our real existence. This state of existence was formed by us while we were in the world of efforts 
as it passed through our hands bit by bit. One can actually say, says Rabbi Desser in conclusion, that after death we find ourselves living within our own past. Let us summarize what we have seen, what we have understood until now. Time was created in order to give man an opportunity to change. The purpose of man, the goal of man while he is living in this world is to constantly change, to direct himself towards spirituality. The more spiritual he becomes in this world, the more he will become closer to Hashem in the next world, Olam Abba, and he will be able to enjoy from a tremendous amount of spiritual abundance, of spiritual enjoyment that Hashem has prepared for him. But it depends on his own efforts. Therefore, this world was created with a flow of time, with a sequence of time to allow man to constantly change. Time is an opportunity. Time is a preparation for the future. Therefore, time is from the root, zimun, which is a preparation for the future. I would like now to deal with another subject, the day of Shabbos. One of the most interesting connections between time and the day of Shabbos is the definition and the purpose that we find on the day of Shabbos. The main purpose of Shabbos is to slow down the pace of time and to direct man and to bring him closer and closer to spiritual development. Purpose of time is to slow down the pace of time and to slow down the flow of time. As we have explained previously, time is a result of changes in reality. And when there are no changes in reality, there is no flow of time. And this is actually the essence of Shabbos. The Torah itself says, concerning the day of Shabbos, Vayishbot bayom ha-shvi'i Hashem ceased to create on the seventh day. No changes in reality at all. The Midrash says, Ma haya ha'olam chaser, what was the world missing? Menucha, the world was missing rest. Ba'a Shabbat, when the Shabbos came, Ba'a menucha, rest came into this world. So the day of Shabbos is a day without changes, a day of rest, when time, the flow of time, slows down, time decreases. How do we reach this state of slowing down the flow of time? We reach it through not making any changes in our reality. And the main mitzvahs, the main commandments we have on the day of Shabbos is mitzvot lo ta'aseh. 39 melachos that we should refrain from doing. Melachot, avot, toladot, many, many things that we should refrain from doing. There are so many negative commandments on Shabbos. 39 melachot and whatever departs from them. Many, many things we should do on Shabbos. There are very few positive commandments, very few mitzvot asher, asher that we have on the day of Shabbos. The reason for this is, is because the purpose of Shabbos is to cause man not to make any changes in reality. What are these 39 melachos that we should refrain from doing, these 39 prohibitions that we shouldn't do on Shabbos? Melacha is an act of creation. What these 39 melachot are, are acts of creation. The most fundamental change we can make while we are in this world is a change in reality. And these 39 prohibitions are 39 creations, acts of creations that we can make in this world. And therefore, it is these actions that we should refrain from doing. We should stop making any changes in this world. And when we refrain from changes, when no changes take place in this world, and there is no difference between the previous moment, this moment, and the next moment, there is no flow of time. Time starts to slow down on the day of Shabbos, nothing changes, and time is very, very slow. The flow of time is very slow, everything calms down, everything slows down. According to this, Chazal, our sages, also added many rabbinical decrees in order to let us feel that the time is flowing down. 
For instance, you shouldn't run on Shabbos. One shouldn't run to any place on Shabbos. He shouldn't think about things that he's used to doing, used to doing during the weekdays. He shouldn't go to any place where he has to do something on what's a Shabbos. He should rest and calm down and slow down. Everything on Shabbos slows down, calms down. Shabbos is the day of changes do not take place in our reality. Therefore, Shabbos is called Me'ain Olam Abba. Shabbos is similar to Olam Abba. The Gemara says Shabbos is one sixtieth of Olam Abba. Shabbos is very, very similar to Olam Abba. What is the connection between Shabbos and Olam Abba? Olam Abba is a spiritual place. And in a spiritual place, no changes occur, no changes take place. Olam Abba is a place where man will be in one static situation, compiled of what he has built up in this world. Olam Abba is a place where there are no changes. And since there are no changes, there's no flow of time. There's no difference between the previous moment and this moment. Olam Abba is a world without changes. So too Shabbos is me'en Olam Abba. Shabbos is a world, Shabbos is a reality where no changes take place, where the flow of time slows down. However, Shabbos is not exactly Olam Abba, since time still flows. But the feeling we should have on Shabbos, since we're not making any changes in reality, the feeling we should have on Shabbos is the feeling of time slowing down, Time decreasing, no changes taking place. What happens to a man in such a reality that time slows down, he shouldn't do anything? What, what are we supposed to do on the day of Shabbos if we're not supposed to do anything? On the six weekdays, man is constantly running around, taking care of many things, taking care of his parnasa, taking care of his spiritual, taking care of his physical demands, education, health problems. Man is constantly running around taking care of many things that he has to. Some of them more important, some of them less important. But mankind is always running around taking care of many different things. And when he's running around from one place to the other, from one thing to the other, he doesn't have time to concentrate, doesn't have time to remember his goal in life. Man's goal in life is not to run around and take care of many things as he does in the six weekdays. Man's purpose in life, man's goal in life is spiritual development. And when the day of Shabbos comes, man is detached from all his involvement in the physical world. Man stops creating, man stops taking care of all these things that he usually takes care of in the six weekdays. When man stops being involved in all these things, he's detached from this. He has time to think and to remember. He has time to remember, to recognize that his main goal in life is not involvement in the physical world. His main goal in life is spiritual advancement, spiritual development. And therefore, when the flow of time is very slow, when man is detached from all the creations that he usually does in the Sikh weeks days, man has a time to remember what his goal is. Therefore, Shabbat and Tshuva are of the same root. Shabbat and Tshuva are all of the root Shav, to return back. Tshuva says the Novi, Shuva Yisrael ad Hashem Elokecha, return. Return to where? Return to Hashem. Return to your main goal in life, your main essence in life. Therefore, Shabbat and Tshuva are of the same root. Go back to your goal in life. Remember what your main purpose in life is. Tzlonim Rebbe says this can be compared to a king who sent his son to fight the battles of the kingdom. But one day, every week, the king said to his son, come back and sit near my table. Don't forget your purpose in life is not to fight the battles of the kingdom. It's true, it's very important to make these battles, to fight these battles, and it's very important. But don't forget that's not your purpose in life. Your purpose in life is not to fight the battles of the kingdom. Your purpose in life is to become a king when you're older. So sit near my table, remember that you're a king before you go back to fight the battles of the kingdom. In the same way, says the Slonim Rebbe, 
One day a week Hashem says, come and sit near my table. Don't forget what your purpose in life is. Don't forget what your goal in life is. Okay, you have to take care of many things. Financial things, educational things. Many things you have to take care of in six weekdays. Okay, that's fine. But don't forget what your purpose is. Your purpose is physical, spiritual advancement. Spiritual development. Don't forget that. When you go back into all the involvement in the six weeks days, don't forget that point. Furthermore, Shabbos does not only remind a person, does not only bring him back to his true goal, Shabbos is also a day that allows a person more observation of the spiritual world. Like we have said before, when man is involved in the six weekdays, he's always involved in physical actions. He doesn't have time for spiritual observation. All he sees is the physical world. But when Shabbos comes and man is detached from all these things, he's not doing anything, suddenly he can begin to observe. He observe the spiritual reality of this world. Hachazon Ish, at the beginning of Emunah and Bitachon says, Midat Emuna. The virtue of emuna, himida daka me'adinut hanefesh, is a very refined character of the neshama. Ima adam hu ba'al neshama, says Hachazon Ish, if a person's neshama is functioning, vish'ato sh'at hasheket, and his time is time of quietness, time of tranquility, then, says Hachazon Ish, Man can observe and see all of creation. Suddenly he sees the sun, stars, the moon. He sees all of creation. And at once, at once, says Achazonish, he sees the Creator. Because the minute you look at creation, you see all the wonders of creation. At that moment, simultaneously, you see the Creator. Says the Baal Hashem Tov HaKadosh. Nechem, says the Prophet. Look up with your eyes. Look up and see who has created all these things. The minute you look at creation, at once you see the Creator. At once you see that this world is actually a spiritual world. It's not that physical as we're used to thinking. At once we see the wonders of creation. At once we see Hashem. Says the Baal Shem Tov, this can be compared to one who covers his eyes with his hands. He doesn't see anything. Everything is there. But he doesn't see anything. The same way, says the Baal Shem Tov, when we cover our eyes with physical glasses, with physical outlook, outlook of this world, we don't see any spirituality. It's all a physical world. But the minute we remove our hands, the minute we uncover our eyes, <laughs> and then we see everything. The same thing, says the Baal Shem Tov, the minute our perception of reality is a spiritual perception, the minute we don't look at creation only through the physical world. At once we see the Creator because this, this creation is a wonderful creation. The physical world is also full of wonderful phenomena that we can't comprehend even. So the minute we look at creation through our, spizik, our spiritual perception, at once we see Hashem. We see as the Baal Shem Tov says, Koach HaPo'el Banif'al. At once we see Hashem's influence in this world. And that's what the day of Shabbos is meant to do. Meant to give man an opportunity for observation. Because the minute man is detached from all his involvement in the physical world, at once he sees the spiritual reality of creation. Therefore, the day of Shabbos, it says in the Zohar, the day of Shabbos is called Yoma Denishmata, a day of the Neshama. And as the Gemara in Beit also says, Neshama Yetera, on the day of Shabbos, man is giving an expansion of the Neshama, an extra portion of the Neshama. The day of Shabbos is the day of the Neshama, of the spiritual Neshama. Since on the day of Shabbos, all the physical functions of man are weakened. Man doesn't have any involvement in the physical world. So, in this struggle between the physical body and the spiritual Neshama, who takes control on Shabbos? The spiritual Neshama. Because this physical body doesn't do anything. No changes in reality, no involvement, detached from all the physical world. Man is in a place where time flows down, everything calms down, no physical actions, only the spiritual neshama rules. And that 
also gives man an opportunity to develop spiritually and to advance spiritually. Therefore, the day of Shabbos is a very unique opportunity that gives man an opportunity, gives man a possibility to direct himself towards spirituality, to advance spiritually and to develop spiritually. How does the day of Shabbos do this? Through the slowing down of the flow of time. When the time slows down, no changes in reality take place, then man is free. He has time, he has an opportunity, he has a time of tranquility to look at creation, to remember his purpose, and to advance spiritually. I would like to conclude this topic by a quotation by the Maharal from his book Der Chachaim on the connection between time and Shabbos. Says the Maharal, Ha'olam hazeh, this world, Ha'olam shil shinui, is a world of changes. As we explained previously, this world is constantly changing since this world is a physical world. And the main character of the physical world is to constantly go changes. Since this world is a world composed of matter, and matter is always changing its structure. Ha'olam haba, says Amaral, sham nimtzet ha However, in Olam Haba, there we find rest. Why? Because in Olam Haba, there are no changes, no movement, no changes, nothing takes place. Therefore, it's a place of rest. Because where there are no changes, actually we have come to a place of resting, a place of spirituality. The Hashabbat, says Amaral, and the day of Shabbos, Ra'ui Shitihiyeh Bamenucha. And therefore, Shai is appropriate that on the day of Shabbos will also be a day of rest because the day of Shabbos is a day where no changes take place just like in Olam Abba. A day of rest, nothing changes, nothing happens and a place where time flows down. And therefore says Amaral, Shabbat ra'uy shetiyeh b'menucha. It is appropriate that on the day of Shabbos we find rest since there is inner connection between Shabbos and time, time stops flowing, time flows down, and therefore Shabbat is also connected to Olam Abba. Shabbos is me'en Olam Abba, a place, a reality, where time flows down. And as we have said, this gives man an opportunity to develop spiritually and to advance spiritually. So we have concluded the series of two shu'urim, on the topic of time, we see that time is a very unique phenomenon that gives a person an opportunity to change. Therefore, it was created within our creation. And time and Shabbos are also very deep, have a deep interconnection, interrelation. And Shabbos is also a place where time stops flowing and gives man an opportunity to spiritual advancement. Thank you very much for being with us.